And read what I said about Naomi. Read it again. Think about Naomi. Think about Naomi for one minute. Uh -huh. Most of the teaching is focused on Ruth, the father. She was just a follower. She was following Ruth. Um, she was following Naomi because uh, Naomi's not going home. The famine is over. The drought is over. Because they had gone. They had gone into Moab because of a drought. Because of a famine. Now the famine is over. She's not going home. And so Ruth said, your God will be my God. And your people will be my people. Oh, man, yeah. Naomi running this. Read it. But Naomi was the golden key mm -hmm. to Ruth's success. Come on. Naomi was a very disappointed woman. What? Her husband and two sons had died. She, when they left and went into Moab, her husband dies, then her two sons dies. Read it. With no one left to care for her. Come on. She was sad and was leaving Moab to go back to Bethlehem. Read this thing. Because the famine was over. Read it. She changed her name from Pleasant One. Because see, Naomi means pleasant. Pleasantness. The pleasant one. She's not pleasant anymore. She got an attitude and she, she full of drama. Because she's bitter. Because she lost her family. Uh-huh. It's a strange one. My God. She has no seed to raise up. Uh-huh. To carry on her husband's name. That's right. Read. She changes her name from pleasant one to bitter one. Mm -hmm. But in conversation with Ruth, Naomi realized that God has given favor. So they get back to Israel. And so Ruth goes out to glean. Oh, I got to say this. Who are these brothers The rich. In Israel, the well-off and those that had substance, that had fields and planted corn and wheat and barley, the Bible says they were commanded, when you are harvesting your fields, when you get toward the corner, don't go all the way into the corner. You're supposed to make a turn and leave the corners for the poor. And then when you go the other direction, don't go all the way into the corner. You're going to make sure you're going to leave that corner for the poor. Mm -hmm. And you make your turn. So you had four corners. That's right. God had me. That the poor were able for free. That was the welfare system. That was the food stamps of that day. Right. See, God has always fixed it for the poor. All right. Right. You don't have to confiscate nobody's well. I like that. Boy, I sat up. My wife said, "Did you hear what New York? You know, so the rabbit, when she stand up old, so she is. So the rabbit, did you hear what New York is doing? And New York now. Y'all remember this Dr. Gosnell? So years ago, there was aborting babies that were full term. How much y'all even remember? He's a black doctor. Now the thing that he did as a felon that he's serving life for, New York has just made it legal. Right. Now, there's somebody who's talking to me. And I told y'all a few weeks ago what's happening is people are passing law. Stuff that's wrong, they're making it right. And this Bible said that that was evil. They'll start calling it evil. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. All right. That meant Holy Ghost. Yes. Right. And then I was listening to them as they were talking. And I knew the principle that God had told his people save those corners for the poor. God, help me with this. And now we have individuals who want to charge us 70% taxes. We don't confiscate wealth. Let the wealthy cut the corners. Somebody said cut the corners. Y'all know that saying? You got to cut corners. And when you cut corners, you have access for the poor. I had to throw that in. That's for a bonus. Read it. They only realize that God has given favor to Ruth through Boaz workers. And they only says, stay in Boaz. So then, here's our, here's our subject. When she realizes her daughter-in-law is gleaning those corners in Boaz's field, and when she realizes that Boaz has told his workers, I need you to take some handfuls and leave them out there for Ruth. Mm -hmm. Just Ruth. See, all the other poor, they get in the corner, but Ruth get extra. Y'all not in here. And to know you know, found that out, she said, don't you leave that field. Y'all ain't in there with me. When you find favor, I don't care where you find, you find favor in a field, don't leave that field. Don't 
But you be cleaning all over. Let me help y'all a little further. Naomi single, Boaz single. Break it down. She looking for a husband, not a boyfriend. And some of us want to clean in too many fields. But we ain't looking for no husband. We're looking for somebody to wash our car one day, turn it on on another day. We're looking for somebody to cut our yard. We're looking for somebody. But Naomi being a seasoned woman, she said, let's be going all over in other fields and working in other fields because you're going to be noticed. See, the reason boy has no notice of her, she's cute. Somebody said, she's cute. She look good. When you know you look good, When people look good, they walk different. Y'all don't want me to show y'all how y'all walk. I think it was that movie, Way in the Edge there. The woman walking out, she wanted, is he looking, is he looking, is he looking? Then she turned around, oh, he looking. Y'all know what y'all doing. That's right. Y'all don't want me. Y'all don't want me. Yes, sir. Preach it. Come on, we gotta move. We gotta move before I get in trouble. Stay in Boaz's field. Don't go anywhere else. Come on. Don't see if the grass is greener on the other side. Stop trying to see if you can get more in another field. Read. Stay in Boaz's field. Just stay in the one field. Because when you find a good field, All right. whatever it costs to stay in the field of faith, you want to pay that cost. You don't want to lose favor. Because the cost of losing favor costs more than the cost of getting the favor. <laughs> Come on, let's read. Let's read. If favor is flowing in your life, uh, stay in its flow. Come on. Who's been good to us? Mm -hmm. Who has given us access to them? Mm -hmm. Who recognized our difference and aided us in our times of need? Come on. Who has for years ignored and looked over our foolishness? They looked over your behavior. See? See, that's what favor really is. Because we all are subject to making Amen. mistakes. Amen. Doing Amen. things that are, are out of character, yes, sir. Uh, unseemly. Yes, sir. And there's been somebody has ignored some foolish things that I said and done in my life. There are some people that have ignored some foolish things that each one of us have said and done in our life. Right. When you find somebody that's willing to look past faults. <laughs> that's somebody you need to be around. You don't need to be around somebody to throw you on the bus. The very first time you stop it. They just sitting there like, I knew, I knew, I knew it wasn't going to I knew it. And somebody said they're just waiting on this stuff. No, they already, listen, let me tell you what the Bible said. All, say it with me, all have fallen. You know what I'm saying? All have already fallen. Why are you trying to wait till somebody stumble? He said, all have already fallen and have come short of the glory of God. We already have missed it. Ooh, help me hold the Read this thing. Who has put up with our attitude? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's just before we putting up with you. See, the crazy out there say amen this morning. I had more people say that amen than the Bible. <laughs> Now, these babies open up their eyes real quick. 
I know what I'm talking about. And we would get on the telephone on the party line. Anybody know what the party line is? See, they don't even know what the party line is. But they had three or four different neighbors on the line. And when the phone rang, you had a certain ring. And some people, because they know it, they knew it wasn't their ring. Because you had two loans in the short. Ring, ring, ring. And you knew who that was. Because you had three loans. Ring, ring, ring. And you know it's not yours. But what you do is, you try to time it. In the minute, that last little ring, he's in the ball to the <laughs> That's right. That's all right, That's why they call it party line. <laughs> but be careful what you said on that party line. That's right. <laughs> but the, the, the mommy got it. That dirty doctor. Man, that was joy. Because they saw something. They saw a future. They saw brightness. Right. Read this thing. Have you identified your field of favor? Mm -hmm. Our fields of favor will not exist without correction. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stop. When you're in a field of favor, correction is a part of it. Yes, the Bible speaks of if a father does not correct his children, he hates them. If you withhold the rod, the rod of correction, you're not beating them to be beaten. And you're supposed to beat them. You ain't killing them. But the whipping you give them must count. All that little stuff. See, that little stuff that you do like that, that's what you do with the, the smaller stuff while you're trying to train them. And then when you find out they're hard head, then you, you reach way back here. See, when they little, you, you know. Oh, no. But when, when they get harder and get bigger, you draw back. <laughs> Anybody got one of those, two of those, or three of those? I know y'all have. I got it. Read this thing. Read it. Because inappropriate behavior will cancel the flow of favor in your life. That's in our what cancels life. Favor. Favor is counseled when we inappropriately behave. That's right. You can't ask God and expect God to keep blessing us, and we are order. You can't keep asking God to bless us and expect God to bless us, and we're not doing things appropriately. Read this thing. The field of favor is not without pain, uh -huh. sweat, and yeah, God, You're going to have sweat and pain. It's, gonna, it's, it's a cost involved to have favor. Read it. The field of favor has a cost. And it will cost us to stay in it. Mm. The entry into the field of favor costs us nothing. Stop. It's real easy to get into the field of favor. Ruth just walked in and started cleaning. Mm -hmm. It's easy to enter. It's easy for all of us to enter the favor of God. God is kind. God is mercy and doing it. God has all of these qualities and attributes about him that, talk, that, that fix it where we can enter into favor real easy. Amen. But if you want to maintain the favor that you're receiving from God, you can control that flow. Change your behavior. Yep. Get out of the line. Get out of the uh, Children, start disobeying your parent. Start not obeying your parent. He gave that people. When God, listen, he meant business. He told those children, he said, that your day will be long upon the earth. You need to honor your mother and your father. He didn't say that about any grown folk who know better. But he said it to children who are being trained. And he told us, we need to be training them in the way that it should go. Because if they don't honor us and they don't obey us while they're coming up, then they ain't going to be long on the earth. That's the word, preacher. Because if you let, oh, help me with this. These little bad, some of these little bad children, because all children are bad, but some of these little bad children continue to be bad children, they're going to be bad at us. Yes, you ever wonder why the adults, some adults are bad? They were bad children. Bad <laughs> but remaining in it costs us everything. It, it costs us everything. If we want to stay in the favor of God, Christ said first, deny yourself. That's a cost. 
Man, when you got to put your feelings on the back burner, my, my, my. you got to put yourself last. He didn't say put yourself second. He said put yourself last. But then he mm -hmm. said if you make yourself last, he said I'll make you first. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, he had this thing balanced. When, 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 when Noah told him, uh -huh, curse be Canaan. He couldn't curse, he couldn't curse uh, Ham. He couldn't curse Canaan. What he was saying was, Canaan, if you do what Ham did to his father Noah, Noah, those type of behaviors, the same troubles and the same hang-ups and the same dysfunction that was in Ham going to be in you. Canaan yeah. was uh, 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 Ham's grandson. So here, here's Ham peeping under his father's skirt, the Bible said. Looking at it, but he did something to him. He didn't just look. Because the Bible said when Noah awakened from the drunkenness, that he realized what Ham had done to him. So I said, done to him. Yeah. And he did something to him that was out of order. Yeah. And the Bible even begins to start teaching from that, that point not to un un uncover the skirt, not only of your father, but especially that of your mother. Y'all not in here. And then in the New Testament, there was a young man. He got all out of line. The Bible said that the, that the, the, the stepson was caught in the act of fornication with the stepmother. And the Bible says, never should have been mentioned in the body, the body of Christ. I wish y'all knew the Bible. But read what I said, what I have. Jesus paid no price to walk into the palace. No, no, no. Oh, Go back read that. Joseph. Joseph paid no price to walk in. Except what did it cost him to go into the palace? Read it. Except for shaving his beard. He had to shave his beard because the Egyptians did not like facial hair. Right. That's Bible. I'm quoting the Bible. And what else? And changing his clothes. And they had him to bathe and change his clothes. That's all it cost him. To walk in the faith. God. It, it, it's easy to enter into faith. But read what I have. But what kept him in the palace? But how did he stay in faith? The Bible said it was in favor so long that Pharaoh died. And another Pharaoh died. And another Pharaoh died. It was Pharaoh died. Uh -uh -huh, God help. It got to a point that rose up a Pharaoh yes, sir. that didn't remember Joseph. God help me with this. And the people for a hundred of years would have had favor if they'd have kept Joseph in their remembrance. Read it. Observing protocol. Uh -huh. Have you ever been kicked out of the field of favor? Come on. Now that we're no longer in the field. Have anybody stopped helping you? Just stop, just stop helping you. Cold. Has anybody that was friendly toward you stop being friendly with you? Yeah. Stop calling them your enemy. Okay. That's a reason why we lose favor. Okay. That's a reason why people get tired of helping. Yeah. That's a reason why people get tired. Of foolishness. Okay. I wish I had more. Amen. 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 When, 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 when people begin to turn on one another and have different outlooks and views about one another, uh -huh, uh, that's usually some mutual yes, sir. Amen. back and forth going on. That's right. Amen. And then if, if you hear somebody say, you know, I just don't know why. Watch it yeah. now. What, what happened? I, I don't have any idea. Good. You know, you know, you know, black man ain't no good. 
long as you pay that rent, that life is heaven for you to do. Oh, you're preaching, sir. That's my boo. That's my boo. <laughs> <laughs> that's my boo. <laughs> I love me some him. Come on, read this. Never shut yourself out of the field of faith. Never shut yourself out. The field of faith, read it. And never burn your bridge to the field of faith. And if there is a field of favor that you have left, don't burn the pathway back to have access. Read it. Because God is not obligated to give us another one. God is not responsible, obligated, or compelled to give us another field of favor. So if you find one, you need to protect it. Protect it with right behavior. Uh -huh. Protect it with adaptation. You need to adapt to the field. Okay, let me just say it like it is. See, 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 if you are dependent on needing someone's help, you need to adapt to them. People don't not supposed to have to adapt to you and they helping you. You adapt, God will adapt to his self to favor. Joseph wanted to keep his beard, but he wanted favor with favor. So he shamed. You adapt to the one that's causing the favor to be in your life. Read. One of the reasons we are out of jobs in the natural and body of Christ is because we didn't perform up to par and leave the last job right. We leave jobs the wrong way. We leave relationships the wrong way. You don't get upset and walk off a job without giving notice. No, sir. Amen. 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 I can't tell you the number of people that got hired on the job I was working and the minimum guy was making 45. Hmm. Almost sometimes, some of them $50. I'm talking about minimum now. And one day somebody said something. And they said, Oh, there's too much prejudice out here. <laughs> okay. So. Are you going to quit for somebody prejudice? You gonna quit because somebody racist or somebody don't like you? And they did. They just quit. I'll find me another job. No, I'm sure I didn't miss Bible. You know, God, the door closed, God opened up another door. God opened a door that no man can close, and He'll shut a door that no man can close, and you can't get back in that door, too. I'm telling you. Y'all better pray, bro. Come on, almost through. Read this thing. Read this. Some have quit jobs we should not have quit. Uh -huh. We did it out of anger, uh -huh. bitter. We lost our temper. Mm. We've, been, we've been holding in hostility this for a while. Mm. We got bitter. And so one day we snapped. Mm. We really didn't want to quit, but we got out there now because we don't did all this big talk. <laughs> now we don't quit the job. Mm. Read it. Upset. Mm -hmm. And instead of saying, I'm sorry and forgive me, mm -hmm. we stormed off into never. We just stormed off the never to the never, never land. Because you never, never again get that job back. Yeah. And that will follow you to the next job. Yes, so, where did you work last? And you tell them where your work last. How long did you work there? Oh, about 20 minutes. <laughs> We've had guys that came to work and before the first break. We were looking for him. One guy, he was like, he said, man, you mind relieving me while I go to the restroom? I said, break me up. I'll be, be here in about 10, 20 more minutes. Can you wait? He said, I need to go, man. I really need to go. And I let him go. <laughs> but the last time I saw him. <laughs> they didn't go to the restroom. They went straight out that main gate. Yeah. <laughs> and never did come back. Yeah. Threw away $45,000, $50,000. Read this thing. Where has your favor come from? Uh -huh. We need to ask ourselves these questions. Where is our favor coming from? Who's smiling? Who's God chosen? Where that from? God has chosen somebody. I told you you don't need everybody in life. You just need the right person. Right. Right. You don't need a whole bunch of people. Just want the right person. Just one person. Read this thing. Who's been good to you? Uh huh. Identify your field of favor. Come on. And fight to stay there. Come on. And invest in it because it is great soul. Don't you need a field of favor because somebody else got me. Come on, let's go. Let's all let's go. Let me just let's go. You don't do that. Read. Pharaoh like Joseph for years, not days. Come on. We can lose in a day what somebody gave us for 10 years. 
Somebody been killing us for a decade. Showing favor on us for a decade. And you can lose it. Just like that. Read it. We must recognize when favor has stopped. Mm -hmm. And know that there was a reason for it. It was a reason why the relationship failed. Why the favor stopped. It didn't just happen. And there was some mutual exchanges. Read it. I'm training you right now to put value on favor. Come on. Protect it. Nurture it at any cost. Mm. Favor will require adaptation and protocol. Come on. The prodigal son left his field of favor, thinking he could do better. My last example, the prodigal, the youngest of the father's sons, and he told his father, I won't what's do me. And the Bible said that the father gave it to him. And when he gave it to him, that son went into a far, a far country. Now watch this. The young son is already in the father's field. The father is a wealthy man. The father's field is a field of favor. But he wants to leave because he thinks he can do better somewhere in there. Y'all not in there. See, if you think you can do better, just go right ahead and just see if you can. Then we'll talk later. And that young son went into a far country. He got way away from the field of favor. Yes, he did. Amen. Read what I have. He left a very wealthy father. Uh huh. Wealth is proof of focus. See, when you're wealthy, wealthiness and riches is two different things. Amen. When you're wealthy, there is uh, an abundance uh, of well being along with resources. That's right. See, it's not, see, when you can just be rich and have the worst disease on the planet. Right. <laughs> you, you, you can be rich and have no friends. But when you're wealthy, yeah. you, me, uh -huh. you, 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 you have abundance in multiple areas. You have peace and you have joy. You have things money came by. Yeah. See, God said, I'll bring you into a wealthy place. He said, I'll bring you to a rich place. He said, I'll bring you to a wealthy place. That place meant that there'll be place, there'll be some places God will bring you. God, you have peace of mind. You'll have joy, unspeakable. He said, you have so much peace, it'll pass you. Your comprehension, you, you won't be able to understand it. Storms going on in your life. Everything upside down in your life. But you still are looking at it. Read this thing. Productivity. Uh -huh. The ability to, to supervise. This morning, women. See, this is wilderness. Productivity. Focus. Let me tell you something. If we give up a percentage just a percentage of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, mm. video games, TV, you know, scandal. Mm. Y'all hit me with this show. Okay. Who? Love and hip hop, keep it up with Kardashian. Y'all say a whole lot of Stop keeping up with Kardashian. See, you lost focus if you keeping up with the Nationals. But a wealthy person is focused. And that focus brings productivity. And in that productivity, to have maximum productivity, you have to have order. See, see order actually brings increase in productivity. So when you have things in, oh, man, you can feel better when you're looking at that closet and you can tell what's in there. Amen. If you open your closet though and you're looking for something, I know it's in there. I just took it to the train and it should be standing in the bed.
is personalities, that network of different personalities. Why do y'all get so quiet? <laughs> and one personality kind of clashes with another personality, and the Bible calls it a strife. <laughs> and all it is is personality. It's not that you're bad and that person is worse. It's, it's not about that. It's just a clash in the way you do things. And it's a clash in the way you see things. And so you clash and it can't create a strength. Because if it was you, which is not you, but if it was you, uh -huh. you wouldn't do it like that. Uh -huh. That's right. That's right. And so when strife happens, what did I say about strife? I said when there's strife, somebody doesn't belong. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Read this thing. So many other qualities of success, but he won't, I'm sorry. He left a very wealthy father, wealth is proof of focus, productivity, the ability to supervise and coordinate a network of relationships, and so many, so many other qualities of success. Really? But he woke up in a hog pit. Wait a minute, you mean? He left a field of failure and woke up in a hog 